Family and friends, we are excited to have you today for our Bible study. We are in spiritual war. Uh, we're going to continue to lay the foundation for uh, this series. We are in spiritual war. In the last study, uh, we did angels and demons. And I pray that you, you should have received valuable information to help you and strengthen you in this spiritual battle. We also discussed the impact that the angels and the demons have in our physical existence. And so once again, I pray, I, I truly pray uh, you received the information and you kept studying as well as sharing uh, with others this valuable information. And at the end of that session of the angels and demons, uh, as we prepare to close, um, I talked about uh, Satan's kingdom. Uh, that was very, very, very important in the last lesson. I mentioned Satan has a kingdom, I do recall now. He has a kingdom. Um, I want to continue to teach on Satan has a kingdom, but I want to, uh, I think I need to deal with the word kingdom before we go into Satan's kingdom. Uh, this way, uh, you will understand why Jesus uh, focus was always on the kingdom and why Satan is pushing his kingdom and why we should be kingdom minded. I think I need to just lay the foundation of what a kingdom is and the concept of the kingdom so you can understand how God's kingdom and Satan's kingdom function. Okay. Now, even when I was growing up, uh, I believe the believer in church, the believer is asked to be kingdom minded and to have uh, or grasp the kingdom concepts. But oftentimes we do not understand the kingdom principles to understand or or to understand the kingdom concept. And, and, and a lot of times people come into the church uh, and they're busy uh, learning rituals, uh, customs, rights, do's and don'ts, rather than learning and understanding the kingdom. That is very important. Learning what it consists of. Uh, learning how the kingdom of God functions and even learning how Satan's kingdom uh, functions and how God's kingdom differs from religion. Very key word. Very key word. How God's kingdom differs from religion. Okay? But most important, how the kingdom principle uh, should relate to our daily life and, and, and knowing that we are already citizens in the kingdom of God. Okay? Uh, that is very, very important. And I think we spend a too much time uh, in, in some of our churches dealing with customs and rights instead of teaching people uh, the kingdom principles because that's what it's about. Uh, and one of our instructions uh, pertaining to the kingdom uh, from Jesus uh, was to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. Uh, that is Matthew the 6th chapter verse 33. Okay? So I want to take a little time to understand, seek first the kingdom. The first thing we want to do is look at the word seek. 
What does seek mean? Seek means to pursue something, to go after something, uh, to explore something, to understand, okay? So you, write, you want to write that down. Seek means to explore, understand, to go after, uh, pursue something, okay? The next word we want to look at is first. That word first means that seeking the kingdom of God should be first priority, okay? That means placed above everything else, seek first. And so when Jesus says uh, seek first, Jesus was not speaking about religion. He was speaking about a kingdom that has nothing to do with religion because kingdom is not a religion, okay? So he did not say seek ye first kingdom religion. No, he was talking about a kingdom, a, a place, okay? Now I'm going to break that down, okay? So seek first, seek, understand, explore, pursue first, Make it priority, top priority, okay? So kingdom uh, is the rulership of a king. And if a king has rulership, that means he has a territory or a domain. So when we're speaking of God's uh, kingdom, we're also talking about it is God's government. It is where it is dealing with his rulership. It is dealing with his dominion over the earth. It is talking about his administration. And most important, it is talking about his influence over and in the earth. Okay? That's what the kingdom is. Notice it had nothing to do with religion. If people just always want to uh, uh, clump uh, religion and the kingdom together. Jesus never came talking about religion. So anybody teach you that, they're wrong. He never talked about religion. He always talked about the kingdom. Okay? So when Jesus spoke in Matthew, the sixth chapter, verse 33, he also said, Seek ye first the kingdom, but we cannot forget, he said, and his righteousness. That's where the rubber meets the road. Okay? Seek also the righteousness of the kingdom, okay? And that righteousness is relating to us. It's dealing with us. So what do you mean, pastor, is dealing with us? We're seeking the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Well, the righteousness is pertaining to us, and that righteousness allows us to be in a what they call a right position to God's authority, okay? Not only to be in the right position to God's authority, but to be in fellowship with God and to have his regulations fulfill the requirements of his authority upon our lives, okay? So let me break that whole thing down like I just said. All right, let's go back. We are to seek, okay? We are to seek, meaning to explore, understand, pursue the kingdom, correct? All right. We then, it must be first, means the kingdom of God must take top priority. Okay, talking about the kingdom of God. And when you add his righteousness to it, that means while we're seeking and making the kingdom of God top priority, we also, because of righteousness placed upon us, should get in alignment with God's government. Okay? And his authority, which would then qualify us to receive the government 
privileges. Once we receive the government privileges, then it says we will receive all these things added unto you. What are these things that's going to be added unto you when we seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness means get in alignment, okay? What will be added? Well, let's get some good news today. Uh, your your, your uh, physical needs will be added. Your emotional needs will be added. Your financial needs will be added. Psychological needs will be added. Your security needs will be added. Protection in a pandemic, you will have that. Now, that does not mean you go get nilly willy. Uh, you still should obey the law of the land to protect yourself and to protect others, okay? But you still will have protection because you are in alignment with God's authority, okay? Seeking the kingdom of God first. You have protection in a pandemic. You will also have added self-worth, which means there should be no believer walking around having an identity crisis, not understanding or feeling having low self because of themselves, okay? You have all that added self-worth unto you. And on top of that, you get to know God's purpose for your life, okay? That's what you get added, all right? Let's, let's do a recap. Kingdom is God's governmental influence of heaven on earth. It has nothing to do with religion, okay? I, I'm going to keep ramming that. Because a lot of church folks are just religious, okay? They argue about baptism and they argue about this. That's not even the focus with Jesus, okay? The focus he came with was kingdom. God's governmental influence of heaven on earth. Which means that we should position ourselves under that authority and under those governmental influences, okay? That's what that means. So now you see, in plain view, the conflict between God's kingdom and Satan's kingdom. It is about rulership. It is about having subjects, subjects or followers under a spiritual influence control. That's what this is about. Okay? God has already established his kingdom. Satan wants to imitate his kingdom. Let's go to the next lesson.